Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to this year's Grippy Award Show, the third annual. It's, it's, it's hard to believe it's that time of the year again. Um, we're going to be giving out some incredible awards, yeah. some of your favorites, some new ones. A, a good um, bit of new ones this year. And, uh, These are our best yet. Yeah, this is going to be a, an absolutely incredible Grippies as we look back over the season that was 2024. All the ups, all the downs. All just in between. Gosh, I felt like sadness just then. Yeah. And if you're if you're listening, just know this is a black tie event, so you need to go put on a suit. Yeah, we're we all did wearing it. them. Uh, if you're listening, good yeah. point. Yeah, if you're listening, we are all wearing suits. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't dress up this year. Group decision. I um, I said I I texted and I said, hey, are we dressing up for the groupies tomorrow? And Trevor's okay if I said what say what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. I was, I was, I was going to say. No, Trevor gonna said. Trevor said, and I quote. No, every time I do that, I get blasted. <laughs> That's not what I he said. said and I roasted. Wrote, roasted. I see. I said I wasn't planning on it because I I wasn't planning on it because every year or I do it, I just get roasted in the comments. And I like I, this morning, I was like, <laughs> "Is that really true?" I don't top think comment from last year or or the year before, something like that was was basically that. Yeah, it's really. But what was it? Yeah, like what do they say? Uh, I don't know. Bro, I was getting, I, dress up. I don't understand how they're like. I was I, getting, I, us did that surprised crazy. me whenever you said I, that. I was getting compared to a used car salesman. Um, not to well, the point I mean, where listen, like listen. That, I mean. Not to the point where I was like upset about it, but to the point where I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like make an effort in the morning to get dressed like that if nobody cares. Nobody, nobody. Let me put it this way. Nobody was like, I love that you guys dress up. Like you guys all look sick. Like that's not what what we were feeling. I didn't comments. think anybody was wow. gonna say we look sick. No, I mean I wore. I don't even remember. I think I wore. Ray Bans. I love the. I listen. I expect gooders. I wear gooders inside. I perfectly time. expected to text that back and then have one of you two guys be like, "Oh, I really liked the dressing up thing," and then I would have been like, "Okay." We'll oh just no, do I it. didn't care. Well, you. I, I'm always looking for I didn't actually. Not I didn't up. actually care. I just thought it was. Let's not harp on it any further. Else. Let's They're get it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, hey, we'll give out a grippy for who best cared dressed. the least <laughs> about dressing. <laughs> no, best good. dress. We didn't bring it back this year. Just Ezra was too good. Yeah, last year. I, the problem is it's pose on the beach. Well, the problem is it wouldn't change year to year. Like Ezra and Kristen, I think are best dressed just yeah. about every year at but this point. Some things did change. And let's talk about that right after we're from these sponsors. Mini disc golfers have tons of extra discs cluttering up our closets and cars. There are very few storage products on the market that are designed specifically for disc golf, and the ones that are are terribly expensive. Thankfully, though, there is Discbox. Discbox is the only low-cost disc golf storage product on the market. Discbox is a simple disc storage bin that holds up to 30 discs, requires no tape or glue, and is made from recycled material here in the USA. So go to discboxdg.com and you'll find quantity discounts, wholesale options, multiple colors, and most importantly, no order minimum. So you can order just a single box if you want. Discbox also makes a great player pack item. Visit discboxdg.com today and get your collection organized. And don't forget to use code FOUNDATION for 15% off your order. Basketball fans, it's that time of the year again. The NBA is back from opening tip-off to buzzer beaters. Bet Online has you covered with the best odds, biggest promotions, and live in-game betting on all of your favorite teams. This season, every game matters. Bet Online has every stat, matchup breakdown, and live odds to bet on during games, and it's not just the NBA. Bet Online has odds for everything from football, MLB playoffs, NHL, and political props. So head to the website today and get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online, the game starts here. We're going to break out the show with our breakout player of the year award. Dang, huh? That was probably Woo! the highest decibels Connor's ever reached. <laughs> Best segue of the year, <laughs> Grippy, goes a big hunt for that right there. That's a good one, yeah. Um, so as we look back on this year, I think this was the year that a lot of players kind of came into their own. It was a little bit of a changing of guard, in my opinion, in a lot oh. of ways. Um, so we'll actually start off with the FPO nominations. Um, first nominee here is Emily Weatherman. She was able to take down the Des Moines mm -hmm. challenge. This was the year that you kind of found out who she was in a lot of ways. You did, yeah. I had never really heard the name Emily Weatherman going into this year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to win on the Pro Tour is no small feat. She was able to accomplish that. And she was able to get herself in the mix at several other tournaments well, as well. Well, wasn't it uh, DDO that she almost won? I believe DDO well? she lost. Let me confirm that. I believe she lost in that playoff. Yeah. Um, that was the whole foot fault gate situation well that was the disco b gate thing too. no it was that it too yeah it i'm just a little sad because we talked about her for like one podcast and then i thought of like a really funny joke to make and then we never talked about her ever again so i could never make it was here but yeah, it she was came in if, third i think she missed the playoff that's what it was she did the, she would have been in the playoff with, with haley missy and missy haley and haley tried calling the footfall to the playoff but right. it was the disco b situation it was like they You're went right. up and just quickly grabbed it, it kept it yeah kept her out of the yeah. OB. yeah no officials basically if thing. we talked about her again and about her doing well i was gonna be like Oh, and to the weatherman, it's raining birdies. 
There you go. Connor nice. and Weather. Yeah. Uh, the next <laughs> nominee we have is Silva Saarinen. This, she bursts onto the scene um, this year. I think we, she was actually the Rookie of the Year last year, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. If we but did a name of the year, Silva Saarinen would there. be up there. It's pretty good. Um, the real nomination here comes from her kind of dominant reign in Europe for a little bit there. Um, it was during that when the field was split and she was over there. She won two elite series events over there with the Turku Open and the SWO. Um, but then when the field got all together, the Crocole Open and the European Open, she went back to back second places. Um, and then she was able to prove she could do it in the States too when she came in second at GMC. Um, uh, so I read, I literally. I'm I'm like dyslexic a little bit I think because I just read second at GMC and I was like oh my gosh Hunter you just read she got two points she came in 127th she got 127 points she did come in second so I did I did read that right call. that, that was at a funny. minor freak out um, and then the third They're never nominee gonna forgive you for that third nominee we have also would be a good nominee for the name of the year yeah Anakin Steen yeah yes sorry I just thought of something okay. Um, she took down. Is that the share? <laughs> it's, it's a bummer. It's a big bummer. <laughs> she took down Texas State. What's the bummer? Did we get information from one of our beloved players on a segment that we had planned to do during this Grippies? We did not. No, that's a bummer. Yeah, um, I don't remember what that was. It was gonna be Burr's Burns, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a bummer. oh yeah, that's yeah, a big yeah. bummer. Um, Anakin Steen. She won Texas State. She was able to come in tenth place overall on the tour points, and just really just had an overall solid year. She had a few slip ups here and there, but a lot of top fives, a lot of top tens. Very very solid performance. The first grippy of the year. Okay. The FPO breakout player of the year goes to Silva Sarnen. <laughs> really, that that middle stretch very of the nice, year. Very nice. Middle stretch of the year when she had multiple wins in Europe and then it was all the questions of can she do it though when the whole field's together and then the whole field got together and she came back to back second places then she came over and did it at GMC she felt like this was a year that she established herself as one of the better FPO players um, and you know it'd be very exciting Silva to see. is definitely going to put, put herself in the category of man if she threw further yes she would be yes. awesome here's but a good thing though great player though throwing far is a skill according to Holland Hanley and just I agree with that out. so you just got to figure it out He's got to figure it out. I scale. mean, hey. That is a crazy statement to unleash from somebody who has, like, one of the most athletic builds in FPO. That is fair. Silva Sarnin. I don't know if you've ever. Oh. Nice. I don't know if you've ever seen Silva Sarnin. You could be convinced. Like, she is tiny. Yes. Like, I, she walks. She walked past this USDDC and, like, I mean, just small human. So, yeah, I agree. There is skill to throwing far, but easier to say when you're built like Holland Hanley. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to bring out, like, our grip lock grippies to show and remind people that we are actually sending out yes. awards to each of these people. It's not just like a we're making like a fun show about it. They are getting they get give awards. Them awards. awards. We give them Washington Monuments. They're get, they yeah. getting substantial awards. Yeah. Uh, now, Maybe one of the best trophies of the year in oh disc golf. And over in MPO, again, several players had a breakout season. First nominee near and dear to our hearts. Ezra Robinson. Nearer yeah. and dearer to Connor's heart, I might add. Yeah. I love Ezra Robinson. Connor is as yeah. legitimately in love, and it's not, it's real. Yeah. He he wins, he wins, I'm in love with of the year. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> really? That's who you would give it to? Yeah, yeah. I give okay. it to Well, disc golf, for disc golf players, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, uh, <laughs> 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 the nominees, Ezra Robinson, my wife, and the guns of <laughs> Ezra Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> he had, just quite the season, he was, he did not win this year. But he was yeah. able to finish seventh in the tour standings, notching himself multiple top three, several second. He came in second at Beaver State. He came in second at Ledgestone, I think is what LDGO stands for. That, that I feel like is a better way to abbreviate that than LDGO. I it agree. basically looks like they misspelled D-Glow. Ledgestone um, Open. Yeah. Lead Glow. Um, he also... LWS Open, I believe that's Idlewild. He also came in second at, at. Well, that one actually is just called the LWS yeah. Open. Yeah. Uh, top 10 Latter at MVP. Just great overall season for Ezra Robinson. The next nominee we have is Anthony Barella. Ooh. If there was an award for I genuinely love this person from Trevor, it'd probably go to mm -hmm. Anthony Barella. I don't know about that anymore. He's not sure yet. Dang. Uh, AB came out the gates hot with his first win on the Pro Tour ever coming to the chess.com. He then followed it up with a win at Texas States and followed it up with another win at Jonesboro. Uh, and then followed up with another win a little bit later over at Des Moines, making that four Pro Tour wins this season, which came in the season that he had his first ever Pro Tour win. Yep. That's a breakout season. If That's I've a ever pretty good one. breakout. For sure. And then the final nominee we have is Nicholas Antela. 
um, really just kind of established himself as just one of the top players, period. He did have a win at the Open at Austin. Um, you had get that legendary, I think he birdied 18 to win it, and then you just have the him smiling Could ear have won to ear a couple majors too. with the uh, cowboy hat on. Mm -hmm. And just absolutely electric. Put himself in contention multiple times throughout the season. Was kind of always there, always hanging around. Earned a lot of points for uh, Discmania in the Manufacturer's Cup. Um, and so, yeah, great breakout player Speaking there. Of, did we write that one down? I was about to write it down right now. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and the winner of Breakout Player of the Year for MPO goes to Anthony Barella. I mean, to go from last year, he should have won the biggest choke of the year if we didn't have a bigger choke and forget to nominate him for the award. <laughs> um, <laughs> to go from that season and everything that went down there uh, to coming out the gates, winning, and then proving not only, okay, I had a fluke win at chess.com, but he was able to do it three more times and win four. Early in the season, it was starting to be like, no one can beat this guy for player of the year. Yeah. Um, ended up not being true, but it felt like that early in the season. And so definitely a breakout season for Anthony Barella. Yeah, similar to Anthony. What does this Stewart. mean to for the Anthony Barella camp that Trevor's the, the head mm -hmm. of here? What does this mean to y'all's camp? The party. It's a lot of people. It's big. If you go to any tournament, you just see Our AB merch. Every, yes, everybody yeah. freaks. Everybody freaks about AB now, kind of like they used to. I or still do about Paul. I literally thought about making a most popular award award yeah. or the he's popularity award. He, and he's not the most popular as far as who how many people watch his card. Calvin and yeah. Simon are definitely the But I was going to at least nominate But AB. as far as gear, because merch, yes. yeah, 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 big time. Which makes sense. He does have very cool merch. He has cool merch. Yeah. 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 I was definitely going to, I thought about it, but I was like, it's just too subjective, a popularity award. No. But so. our, our fandom has been legitimized this year, for sure. Yeah. I did I did learn win. I did learn not to call him Tony. I didn't realize he disliked yeah. that. Yeah. I he he would throw good shots and I would go, Yeah, Tony. And then Trevor would get really embarrassed. And then a guy next to us was like, Yeah, did you see that podcast where like he said he hates it when people call him Tony? And yeah, thank like, you. And, oh. then you, and then you said, I'm still kind of tense. Yeah, no, I said, to, to, I said, I'm not sure if that makes me want to say it more or less. Yeah. <laughs> I went with less because Trevor was really. Worst fan of the year, Connor Kennedy. Um, our next award is always one of the most. People get the most excited. Not to receive Ooh. it, but people get the most excited <laughs> to hear it. Um, they're always excited, gets excited to receive any of these. <laughs> that's not true. Oh, you're, that's not true. That's true. A lot There's of them. Some negative connotations. No, a lot of the lot of the awards though, people post about on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They they love it. They love yeah. it. This is not one they of love them. It. Oh, okay. This hey, is not one of them. They love it. Next up, we have the Fire Fest of the Year <laughs> uh, award, and we have some uh, some great nominees. I must say, last year. It's hard to beat last year for Fire Fest of the Year. Pretty, we, we had up, multiple lawsuits. We ended up falling, finding some pretty but good we things. We got some out. good ones here. So. Criminal implications here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our first nominee probably will come as no real surprise, which is uh, Jay Ray, the tournament director for the Masters of Bud Hill, who ended up. Um, this is probably the closest to actual Fire Fest because there was a yes. promised event that didn't happen. It did end up happening. And people, oh. courtesy of, I believe it was Sword oh, Disc right. Golf, well, a guy basically. It wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to. So originally. $26,000 had uh, disappeared in one of the greatest magic tricks we've ever seen. <laughs> um, poof into thin air, poof. gone. Um, and the event was basically going to be canceled and refunds were promised eventually. As yeah. in, uh, you're not seeing that money, chill out. Forget about it. Um, it was saved by, again, I think it was Sword Disc Golf, if I remember, Tyler Searle, I believe is how you say his name, but Tyler something. You think um, anybody would bail us out if we committed a disc golf crime? I'm going to say don't know. no. He ended up fronting the the money, the, like, I think it was 26000 if I'm remembering correctly, he fronted the money to make the event still happen. So good guy of the year award. Yeah, I'd assume he him. wasn't trying to help but, out, what's his name? No, he was, he was trying, trying to help, to help, all help the out the players. Yeah. Yes, he was yeah. doing it as like, you know what, like this event, and it, a lot, the course, Bud Hill, was getting a lot of negative press, Yeah, even though they had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless even though it did work out in the end the initial thing well, still and the good news is justice was served i mean he got um he's on probation in, indefinitely 12 month yeah is what 12, it, month. 12 month suspension yeah so that's good you know justice served. that's a that's yeah. probably fitting for, so he for can't, stealing 26 grand well we do have to think you know once <laughs> that's probably fitting so he can't steal 26 and grand the hate was enough the hate was it was enough plenty of punishment. And if it's not enough let's just all say shame and that will probably make nah, it the fine. pdj wouldn't like that okay yeah, yeah. yeah right, we might right. end up with a bigger suspension than he got oh true yeah, yeah. um cruel and unusual punishment but the good news is he in the next 12 months he won't take 26 grand again that's good to know For the next that's 12 true. months just keep an eye out next year around this when time 2025 you know? comes back eyes out yeah you know everybody head on a swivel yeah, um, but you're gonna see him drive well, we a brand new uh you're gonna see him buy, driving a brand new nissan versa though yes 
So that's nominee number one. A juke, if you will. Next up, <laughs> we have Prodigy Disc. Back-to-back nominations for Prodigy. That's big. Releasing Kevin Jones and Vino Makula mid-year. Yeah. Um, I would say they... Without really, a lot of explanation. Say they really qualify for this one because they had probably... I mean, it happened so close together. The timing was so weird, and they it just became speculation city. Yes. Yeah. Um, like, the sky is falling. And then we got more info on it, and it ended up, you know, just kind of being, obviously, financial reasons. But it definitely put them in the spotlight in it a fire-festy way. very fascinating for a few weeks there. Um, and then, finally, we have the House of Discs restructuring. Restructuring. And then layoffs that proceeded after mm. that. So, getting back in the hands of disc golfers was the first post that went out. And it was like, what does that mean? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then three weeks later, yeah, we knew what it meant. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's just the way they worded it didn't make any sense. Yeah. It was and then a few weeks later, you had the layoffs, particularly at DD, and it hit close to home because Disc Golf Weekly got laid off. And we found out another guy. Um, I don't say his name in case he didn't want it public, but another guy who we've done stuff with Foundation before also got laid off with the marketing mm. team there. So it seemed to be mainly their marketing department, but it, it kind of was a little bit widespread. So um, that was our final nominee for Firefest of the Year. But the winner for Firefest of the Year goes to J. Ray and the Masters of Bud Hill. Do we clap? Yeah. As, boo, well, we clap. Well, these, claps are, these claps are for sore disc golf or whoever took it over. Yes, yes. Yeah. That yes. made it be like, you know, at least it wasn't an obvious choice. Can I ask a question? Are we going to send him a group? No. <laughs> no. We never send We don't send the Firefest one out. Okay. Yeah. That, okay, that's good. That's just like cyberbullying. Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> um, all right. This next one is really an honor to be be able to to even nominate some of the, the people I'm about to nominate. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Um, this award is for the longest podcast. Oh, mm. We got some good nominees. It's here. a prestigious award. Um, there was a it was a dog fight again. Uh, the voting this is one of the toughest votes. Um, but the nominees we had the 24 uh, hour putting live stream mm-hmm. that Trevor and I did. Yeah. yeah. Smashbox received a nominee for the second year in a row. Okay. Um, long podcast. Long yeah. podcast. Great podcast, but long podcast. And the final nominee was Tour Life. Man, I almost fell asleep by the time you got to life. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think there's really any surprise here. This they it's probably the most cut and dry one. Here. They fought yeah. hard. One of to those defend was, like you award. literally in the title. One of those was so much longer than the other. So yeah, let me that just read is it. Very true. They they fought hard to defend this award. Mm-hmm. No surprise here. Longest podcast goes to Tour Life. Yeah, they deserve it. Great. They deserve uh, it. I mean, yeah. The kind yeah. Of, come Silas, on, come, come on, big side. Speech. 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 speech, speech, speech. What speech. happened to the longest podcast award from last year? Did, we, did it go to Brody? Uh, Yuli has, has it. I go. feel like Silas should Except have this award. Like, yeah, Silas or Brody deserves yeah, this. Yeah, you know, it's an honor to have this. Um, spent many late nights here. <laughs> yeah, Silas so like, so like, yeah, you're right. It so took forever. Like night. Um, but you know, it, it's great to be awarded this this trophy. That we we know, should let Silas keep this one. So. Yeah, I think I think this one goes to Silas. For what do you sure. think, guys? He deserves yeah. it. Yeah, he deserves that it. was the shortest thing that's ever happened around tour life. What Silas <laughs> yeah, just did. You're just not then. kidding. Well, it, they don't give him the mic off, and if they did, sure. it would probably yeah be a, a more he'd probably scoot him along. Yeah, yeah. A more pertinent show to the point show. Mm-hmm. But all right, we love them. Love them. Friends of the show. Friends of the show. But yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to stay on it too long. So no, that's a good point. Good point. Well, as soon as you say tour life, things just start dragging on. Yeah. <laughs> Next up. Nice ones. Next award we have is the most improved player award. And we have some statistics to back this up for oh, the MPO side. I love science. You thought we didn't know about numbers? I we figured science. them out. Courtesy of Edwin Stats. Oh, yeah. Let's go, Edwin. We have three nominees here for the most improved player. We have Joey Buckets, Joseph Anderson, Ezra Robinson, and Luke Taylor. Okay. Mm-hmm. All of them improved in different places. Um, their average finishes all went up, with the largest being a 37% increase. Um, we had a top 10 percentage, almost hit 50% for one of these players. Wow. Um, but there's one guy that just kind of ran the tables. His average finish is the one that increased by 37%. His birdie rate increased by 7%. His circle one green and regulation increased by 11%. Wow. His circle two putting increased by 0.5%, but stayed oh. about the same. Everyone's oh. stayed about the same, though, so that's kind of all a gray area. Good read. <laughs> and what really solidified it for him is he was able to get a win on tour. The winner of the most improved award goes to Joseph Anderson. Very nice. 
Great season from Ezra and Luke, though. Luke Taylor really impressed me at Worlds. Yeah. He was he was popping Next off. Next up. Now, over on FBO, we have three players that really, well, two players solidify themselves as they almost, you, you got to beat them if you want to win. And one player was like, I'm not done yet. I'm still around. <laughs> nice. Um, so first nominee, we have Evelina Solonen. This year, multiple time tour winner and world champion now from, yeah. I don't think she won any pro tour events last season. No, I looked on uh, I looked on UDISC to double check that I had no wins anywhere and was 25th in the uh, tour standings last year. Next up, we have Holland Handley, who was also able to take down a win on tour this year, and she was actually leading the pro tour points for a while there, almost until the end. Yeah. Um, but she was able to still finish n near the top. Had an incredible season. She went from previous seasons was always in the catalog category of we expect her to kind of do de decent at this at courses with that distance, but she's not going to win when pressure gets on. She's going to fall apart. To she's a legitimate player that week in and week out you've got to worry about and beat. Oh yeah. And then the final player didn't quite get to that category, but was just solid all season long, which was Rebecca Cox. Yeah. Okay. Final nominee here. Um, she's been around on tour for quite some time. And yeah. I feel like over the past few seasons, she had kind of fallen back to where you might not have heard her name very much, might not have seen her very much. Whereas this season, she got herself in the mix a lot more. Yeah. She had, she jumped quite a few spots this year. So those are the nominees. And the FPO most improved player goes to. Evelina Solonen. Come on, Evelina. What a season for Evelina. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, really solidified. And what was impressive is she she still has a really high ceiling. I, I mean, mainly because on the putting green. She's got a yeah. lot of strokes that she can still make up, and she still had a very, very strong season and, uh, you know, has a, has a case for another award, we'll say, yeah, wow. yeah. later in the show. Um, sticking with FPO, our final major before the Trevor's Trivia break. Our final, final major, major, yep. Our final major award before the Trevor Trivia break is for the best FPO major. Come on, uh, four nominees here. We have U.S. Women's mm. Champions Cup, okay. World Championships. We're a little biased there. Yeah. Don't be surprised. We a like little biased there. We did like that. We like that we one. Do want to give Worlds an award? Mm -hmm. And the European Open, which is arguably one of the best run. Um, it really, at the end of the day, yeah, a few good majors there. At the end of the day, what this award came down to is, and I don't mean this as a slight. Okay. Oh. But what this war came down to. Don't be slighted. Don't be slighted now. Is I'm not slighted. When a non PDGA entity runs a major, mm, I think you're slighted. It just <laughs> you, it can't. It just it just proves time and time again when you have the same entity in control of a major. It just it feels different. You're on yeah. the grounds. Everything feels different. So, the best FPO major goes to throw pink. Woo! Yeah. Out of wow. the field. Out of nowhere, yeah. yeah. Not even nominated. <laughs> not even nominated. Wow, how did they Some let that happen? It wasn't even in the category. Oh, what? <laughs> We're not one of those people. That's crazy. Well, it's breaking boundaries. The best FBO major by far was throw pink. Yeah. They just, for some reason, put the letter A instead of M next to it. Yeah. So, that's all there is. That's crazy. All right, time for the fan favorite segment, Trevor's Trivia. Right after these messages? Right after these messages. <laughs> this guy. Right after we chucked this bag at Silas. Trevor's trivia. Okay, I've got a fun. I forgot to remind you to select. I got a bad. fun little blast from the past here. Blast okay. from the past. <laughs> um. It's time to play the game. <laughs> All that's right. Fun. That's so, fun. Oh, that's honestly really good. That wasn't me. I went oh. back. Oh, we're gaslighting them. Interesting. <laughs> that was Connor's voice What's going guys? on here. <laughs> I went back in time because this is our third annual Grippy Awards. You've right? had a time machine this whole time. Yeah. Trevor. Hunter's on friend. crack right now. Um, so obviously it's not true. 2024. <laughs> <laughs> just to clear that up. 2024 this is our third annual. We did one last year, 2023, 2022. Uh -huh. We did one as well. Yep. We didn't do one in 2021. Okay. But in 2020, you and I on the couch did an end of season. We just called it the foundation awards. Yeah. We did an award show. And there yeah. was like four or five picks. Yeah. Um, and it was really a great watch, um, for a couple reasons. Number one, we're so quiet. We were so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and then number two, like Hunter and I at this point, like we knew each other in college, but we had only been working together for a few months. And so the way that you and I debated Just was on the couch. adorable. <laughs> <laughs> like I would say something and like, no, Hunter, and you'd be like, I don't know. Like it was not <laughs> remotely vicious. It was very, very it's probably what civilized. The, it's probably what the comments want. 
Um, like it, it's, civilized or timid. It, if you guys want to go back and ever what did watch you prefer? this, <laughs> if you got to go back and watch, it, I think it was episode Grip Lock episode number twenty one. And it's just so funny because like I'm listening to an argument being like, if we were having the same argument right now, we would be yelling at each other. And we were just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, I went and pulled some questions from that show to just see if you could guess at like the kind of things nice. that we were handing out. Love so uh, this is 2020. Obviously, you remember the 2020 season was a little bit different. Yeah. Try to gauge that season. So first thing, can you guess who the Player of the Year awards were handed out to for 2020. This was obviously both NPO and FPO. 2020. Chris Dickerson. No, US, USDGC didn't happen. did happen in 2020, but did Dickerson win? I don't it's know. the only major that year. Um, I think Dickerson took it down in 2020. 2020. Paul had a really good season in 2019. Don't remember what he did in 2020. 2020 is just a blur. It was a blur. I think for FPO in 2020, it probably was still Paige Pierce. Okay. That's correct. And then MPO, I'm going to say Paul Macbeth. That's I think, correct. I think you ticked off Chris Dickerson's wife during that episode, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I did. Someone did, yes. Oh. Maybe not during that episode. At some point that season, <laughs> for what? I don't remember. I just oh, remember a respect, Facebook rant. Not, like, not giving Dickerson credit. I don't think we gave him enough respect, yeah. Okay. Which um, now we're one of the Dick Dickerson stands. We're the stands. Yeah. Um, stands that was here. correct though. Okay. So the next one. This one's tough. What does tough. stands mean? We gave like, out like we just stand stands up for them. Stands. stands. No. I, stands. No. It stands. S is that a real thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or Dickerson stands. It's like is that a sports thing? No. no. Pop it's just, culture more honestly. Yeah. Okay. Like I the Taylor it. Swift stands. I don't know what it means, but it's it's I like just I people mispronouncing it like, fans. It's like they're OG and like hardcore fans. Yeah. I use it as like I'm a stand up for that person no matter what. The stands. Stands. Okay. Gosh, I guess we went. I'm an Urban that Dictionary. Up. That. We might need to look that I'll, up. I'll Google it. Um, so the next awards we gave out were Shot of the Year for both FPO and MPO. I don't think you'll remember FPO. You probably oh, Stans actually is in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Okay. And it's uh, excessively enthusiastic and devoted fan. Sick. That's awesome. Merriam-Webster has kind of like started to add in just some crazy. Well, it stuff. might not be added in too. It could just be something that like actually was a word, and then people started reintroducing Maybe. it. Maybe. So, shot of the like year. Like Riz. <laughs> yeah, the FPO one, I don't think you would ever get, but it was Haley King's putt to win the Pro Tour Championship. Um, MPO. We had a debate on shot of the year. This is the one that I thought was really funny and cute the way we were debating it. 2020? In 2020, we were debating shot of the year. I've seen so and many And we were debating it on the <laughs> pretense of, I didn't think your shot qualified. Do you remember what the two shots were? My shot qualified. The one that you picked, and that I think most people would agree was the most impressive shot of that year, I didn't think should qualify. So it probably wasn't successful. And therefore, I picked a different one. It's one of the more famous shots in disc golf. One of the most viewed shots ever in disc golf as well. Oh, the slip ace? The slip ace. Yeah. Uh, because it wasn't Kevin intentional. Because it was, no, it wasn't during a round. Uh, so, yeah. It was during a. Could, could you, can you uh, remember right. what I picked that year? It was a Paul McBeth shot. I'll try to give you that much. 2020? It was... I don't think you'll be able to remember, though. Because it... I mean, it was a great shot, but I think we were kind of grasping at straws for shot of the year. <laughs> I have no clue. It was his ace at Maple Hill on hole eight. Oh, come um, on, Trevor. Right. <laughs> come on. That's easy, Trevor. But I don't think it was a... I don't think my pick was great, but I, the whole argument was basically... I was just like... That didn't happen during a tournament, and then you were like, it was the most viewed and shared. That was the whole argument. Made Sports Center. I'm not going to rehash it because I don't care anymore. Let's hear, let's hear the <laughs> argument now. No. I would. I, I could would, already feel. I, 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 I was trying I, to avoid I think that. I would still claim Kevin Jones is a shot of that year simply from the fact that, like, it had the biggest impact on disc golf. I think I'd probably be more likely to agree to that now that our, like, back then we were trying to do, like, the Grippy we were Awards. To be serious. Well, the Grippy Awards is more of a loose thing. That, it's more seemed like it was an in season award, like a season awards thing. And so I, I was basically saying, like, you wouldn't give shot of the year to an all star game shot. Like it, that was my whole thing, but I think I would probably agree with you. Um, in any case, look how far we've come. Yeah. Um, okay, this is a fun one. Surprise player of the year. We gave out an FPO and MPO. Surprise, player. surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Not breakout. I'm gonna have to tell I'm you. Here. And I gotta tell you what on you. I named it as mine, but this is the two that we ended up agreeing on. Surprise player of the year. <laughs> Okay, surprise! So try, try. I'll, I'll I don't even know what that award means. These were kind, this would kind of be like breakout player of the year. Okay, twenty twenty. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just a funny name. Probably Chris Dickerson. 
So that's who I picked, and you disagreed. Dang. And, and you were like, I've watched Chris Dickerson play for years. I wasn't surprised at what he did this That's year. fair. <laughs> that's that's what you fair. Said. That sounds like something I said. <laughs> that's, I actually, that is what you said. that's actually a very good point. <laughs> Just kidding. That's, it, a, that's a pretty dumb way to look at the award, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so it should have been Chris Dickerson. I would agree. Uh, we ended up giving it to Kyle Klein. That's fine. And we said... Just to point back to 2020, we both said like we didn't even know this guy existed. Yeah, before. yeah, that makes so sense. that was his That's first fair. year. Um, okay, I can understand if if Kyle Klein's on the. T- I don't know what Kyle Klein did that season, but I can understand being. I think like, this is the year that he won like Mid America. I can understand like being a player a where like Dickerson had played on tour a little bit and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like he he had been around, but he wasn't yeah. great. But I, it's just like you'd seen him versus a player you hadn't seen. I remember I being surprised. We, we by went with Kyle, Kyle Klein. Klein that year. I remember that. Um, being like, who do you think guy? who could have won the FPO Player of the Year? FPO Kristen, surprise player. Kristen of the year. had already won U.S. Women's in 2019. But this is pandemic year. Her. This is pandemic year, so they weren't um, even over. Um, no Europeans were like playing at all. Missy Gannon, maybe. Good guess. It was actually Haley King. No. And she didn't really do much but win the finale. But uh, my surprise player nomination that year was I said, I'm going to twist it. And I was surprised at how little Paige Pierce won this year. That's, that's, <laughs> oh, man. that's funny, Trevor. And you hated it. And in any case, um, that's well, funny. All right, right we'll, we'll move on. The last thing the last thing we had, I, will, I won't make you guess that, but performance of the year we gave out to Dickerson, USDDC, and then Haley King, the Pro Tour finale. I think but, I could have guessed that just based on the context clues of everything exactly. else we just that's said. That's why I didn't make you guess it, but <laughs> I thought that was a fun look Because it seems like those it. were the only two events that really happened yeah. based on those awards. But it's crazy. 2021 was the only year we have not done some kind of end of the year. We just kind of brushed past it. And then I think the reason we started the Grippies is because you were like, last year we forgot to do an end of the season awards. There you go. And that's how this show started. That's so funny. All right. Well, next up, we have our first ever Manufacturer's Cup Award. That's exciting. Um, this one, obviously, you already know, who you already know what happened if you've been listening, but we will hit, read off the top three. We'll start in third place. Um, we have Innova, Champion Discs. Congratulations, Innova. Great season. Um, I will say that the winner, I believe, more than doubled their points. Oh. Uh, second place, second and the only wrecked. one... The only one that really gave first place a fight at all this season was Discraft. Mm. Congratulations, Discraft. Great season. Good job, Discraft. Proud of and you. And they have just an army of players. And then the winner, mm. riding on the back of Sir Gannon yeah. and Niklas, really, yeah. and even Gavin Babcock okay. at Babcock, different times, yeah. um, Casey White, I think, yeah. snuck in there a few times, but they really, a decent little cast of players. Gannon Burr. Yeah. Yeah. Discmania, mm. winning the first ever manufacturer's Good job, Discmania. cup. Discmania, yeah, you deserve it. That's I think great. next season, I've already been talking to Edwin a little bit. Um, I think next season we're probably going to shift how we award points a little bit and probably try to combine MPO and FPO mm-hmm. into yeah, one yeah. manufacturer cup. I like it. So, I like that. Yeah, um, we have some some plans for it because it was a success this year. I, I think, think it was you, fun. I think you see a listener. Yeah, so, so we're gonna be mailing Discmania we send this out to their headquarters. Should we? Now this is just brainstorming here. Should we make a manufacturer's cup or do we make the manufacturer's cup a grippy? I think we make it a grippy. Okay. Yeah. So I think it just fits they'll be the getting them. All right. That is kind of confusing though. Next up, we're going to go ahead. We can just change it to the manufacturer's grippy award or something, but I mean, we're going to give out one. Manufacturer's cup. We're not winner. strangers to mm-hmm. naming them weird things. That's true. <laughs> do we need to make it a cup though? <laughs> Does it have to be a cup? We'll put it in a cup. Why do they we'll call mail it a cup? A because it, that's the truth. Because there's a cup. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. I yeah. thought it might be a dumb we, thing for me to think. We can just though. make a cup and put it on top of the. Why no, do they we'll call just, it a bowl? We'll just <laughs> etch, we'll have them instead of the grip lock here. We'll etch a manufacturer's cup logo. There we go. There, perfect. Because Tour Life so, also talked about the manufacturer's cup. So they give out a bowl for the bowl games. No bowl. No, games. they're played in a bowl arena. I think. Well, gotcha. bowl games. I'm not sure where it originates. Okay. But there's different trophies for like hat, all of them. So I got you. I got you. The next award that is was sometimes football with the Connor. most <laughs> elusive. Well, this one a lot of people really want, I'm but only, one, only two people get. I'm one person from each, FPO and MPO. Player of the year. It's already time. <laughs> dun, dun, the grippy for player of the year. We'll do the le- less dramatic one first. Okay. Player of the year, we have uh, Gannon Burr yep. for MPO nominee. Mm-hmm. We also have some Dark Horse nominees. We had, oh, to, find, we had to find some nominees that were in his class, and yes. that was hard to do. Um so, but we we did it successfully, I think. Uh, next nominee for Player of the Year was 2015 Paul Macbeth. Okay, that's and a good uh, that's a good yeah, that's good. 1995 good Ken Climo. He was hard to find. We had to go back all the way back to 1995. And the that's winner crazy. for Player of the Year, taking everything into consideration, everything. Mm-hmm. Gannon Burr. Wow, wow. I mean, wow. this dude won. Wait, but Ricky played with both of them. 
<laughs> That's true. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, so does that change your mind? We nominated everybody, and they were like, oh, yeah, only one of them played this year. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. And then we oh, decided that makes it for sense, because it's of yeah. the year. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't say what year. Exactly. On his notes, it just says player of year. So <laughs> player of year. <laughs> that could be anything. Yeah. Now, Ganon Burr, I mean, the dude won, what is it, nine times total, major win, tour championship win. Every, he swept the elite pluses, I'm pretty sure. $200,000 in cash earned on the, on the course this year. Yeah. One for the history books. Um, it's huge. Some are calling it the greatest season of all time. Ricky Wysocki's not one of them. He said on Twitter, uh, I played against both of them. Paul McBeth's season was better. But... Other you know, people are calling Gannon Burr the greatest. I, I'm not really. I don't want to speak on that tweet a ton. But the only problem, well, you can't really have a problem. It's his opinion. Trevor has a great. The point only with thing this. I no, I, I'm not even going to get into all that. I will Dang say it. for me with Ricky, I think it's totally fine to say 20. Like you play with both. I yeah. thought Paul was better. I agree. The fact I don't that think he said yeah. and it wasn't even close. I think that's just a little disrespectful to the guy that just chased you down and beat you with a six when you had a six shot lead. I think that was a little. That almost felt like a like a slight. And it wasn't even close. Like, you really think if Gannon was around back then? That could then? be a little bit of an emotional what I, I like, think that was a little emotional. What I would, have, <laughs> what I would like point. to ask Ricky, because again, his opinion, but I would like to ask him if he's gotten better from 2015 yeah. to now. Sure. Yeah. Just ask that. Yeah. And just see. Well, if, I think the best. If he has, then be like, okay, so maybe the player you're playing against has also been a little better. Figure that one out. I don't know. Apples, apples. But that to was, me. That was talking Ricky. To me, the reason Gannon Burr's season could be argued as the greatest season of all time, others say others are saying it. I've just heard their arguments, and I'm going to reiterate it as if okay. it's my own, yeah. if you will. You I can. like that. Um, right. I'd like you to be can't my, be bl- my... I would never blame you. You can be my no. argument surrogate, if I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm going to just... I've heard this argument <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> is basically the depth of field, I think, is just number one, two, mm. and three here. Gannon yeah. Burr finished 13th, was his worst finish ever mm-hmm. on the tour. His average place was way up there. Um, you didn't say the other thing, too. Like we could watch it. We can. Well, well, you can. Yeah, you can look back and yeah. watch both of them. Like, I, I, okay, I'll just say it. Oh, okay. This is, I want you to say this, Trevor. This is this my is big the best thing. take. And like, once again, I know the comments are gonna hate this crap. I don't think cares, Trevor. Like, Who cares Ricky, about the comments? Ricky, Ricky, Burr's 2024 season. You look season. great today, Trevor. It was the greatest Ricky. season of all year. But like, all time. it's one thing. Say it. If say you're talking to a former <laughs> defensive on. lineman and they're like, "You don't understand how good this O lineman was. I played against him, and he literally was in the trenches, and he felt the strength of that player." Golf. It's just you throwing shots, and we can all watch it. It's not like it's some secret. Yeah. It, you know, we can all go back and look at it. You don't, like, so feel like, something different if you're <laughs> right. there. You I, know? Can, I can look at that. They played some of the same courses even. They played a lot that were way easier, and I can look, and I can watch it. It's not like it's behind closed doors. It's a doors. very good point, Trevor. It's not like Paul McBeth was in an arm wrestling match with you. Yes. I, I can watch what he did. What I will say. I can watch nowadays. I do believe that. I was alive for both. I, would be, I believe that 2015 Paul McBeth probably felt harder to beat. In 2024, Gannon Burr. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could, guess I could see that. Probably just because I think Macbeth in 2015 probably felt unbeatable because he was doing yeah. something that had never been like he was playing a game at a level it hadn't been played at. Mm-hmm. But the game's played at that level a lot now. Yeah, is, is, is the tough part. Yeah. I think the I think the biggest question you have to ask yourself is if you took Gannon, if you you if you're going to make the argument for 2015, Paul Macbeth, especially if you're going to say it like convincingly, you have to be able to say if you took Gannon Burr right now, a guy who is pretty much flawless in disc golf and put him in that era does he not too also dominate of course he does i do also think that of course he does it was, it was right after Are he got absolutely me? chased down and demolished by ganon you throw him there, into some there of those could have been something emotional yeah there. you throw him into some of those events back then like yeah he's gonna chuck his hyzers all over the place too yeah you know he, wasn't even, he wasn't even born yet now that's not that that's not that fpo this one is uh, is a little devious. I don't oh. or I don't even know if devious is the right word, but it's a little... It could go a lot of different ways, realistically. It could deviate. And it comes so down to one devious. thing. We'll talk about that in a second. I brought up this chart here so I can look at but our three nominees for FPO Player of the Year are Kristen Tatar, okay. Missy Gannon, and Evelina Salonen. And let me read you their resumes. Major victories. Kristen Tatar has one. Evelina Salonen has two. Missy Gannon has one. Wow. Elite Series victories. This is excluding majors. Kristen Tatar has five. Evelina Solomon has two. Missy Gannon has five. Wow. Disc Golf Pro Tour standing. Kristen Tatar is in third. Evelina Solomon's in fifth. Missy Gannon's in first. Average finishing place. Kristen wins at 2.6. Evelina averaged 4.5. Missy averaged 5.3. Worst finish. Kristen also wins. Eighth place was her worst. Evelina's 15th. Missy 22nd. We'll go, we can go on and go, you know, go on from there. Very interesting stat at the bottom here. Total earnings for 2024, 
Chris Natar, $102,000. Evelina Solomon, $76,000. Missy Gannon, $104,000. What makes it even more interesting is if Owen Scoggins shank on hole 18 hadn't hit that pole and bounced back in bounds, Chris Natar would have lost a tour championship yet still had the most earnings this wow. season, yep. which would have been crazy. Um, so, here's my opinion. I think this argument comes down to weighing majors and your view of the tour champion or of a uh, throw pink for sure so when i'm looking at this argument it seems a little similar to calvin last year and isaac robinson last year very similar um and, yeah so ahead. how i view it i weigh majors at two okay typically so that would give evelina solonen two four from both her majors then two for the elite series that gets her six okay when you weigh it that way, Chris and Tatar is currently sitting at seven, but with only one major. Mm -hmm. But the problem with this chart we're looking at right now, because Missy Gann would also be the same part, seven with one major. Throw Pink doesn't count as an elite series or a major. So yeah. Throw Pink's not considered, even though it has the same strength of field, a bigger tournament presence, a bigger purse, and pretty much everything else they're playing. And it won Major of the Year. And it won Major of the Year. It did win Major of the Year. When you factor in that Chris and Tatar won that, it is of my opinion, and I believe of the show's opinion, that well, it I, gives Chris and Tatar the edge. Here's what I'll, here's what I'll say. This that is might, far closer than I thought I it think was. this is interesting, too, because think about last year with um, Calvin and Isaac. Yeah. Last year, if I and I'm trying to remember this as carefully as I can, I believe Isaac had just two majors to his name, and I believe Calvin had two elite series and a silver. So straight up, maybe it was three elite series. It was and more, a yeah. It might have been three and a silver. But in any case, if you weighed, if you weighed Isaac's majors like way we do, I think he had the edge over Calvin. But people gave a lot of credit, obviously, to his finishing place. Yes. If you do, if you if you apply the same litmus test and you get to throw in a major for Kristen as well this year. You you have to you I think all the people that voted Calvin last year would have to side with Kristen in this one. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm one of the person that voted Isaac last year, and I think I have to side with Kristen. I, I agree. Because the other thing you have to look at is she played less events than everyone else. Right. Kristen played 15. Evelina played 17. Missy played 22. So Missy has the same resume of, of as Kristen, but with seven more events played and no throw pink. Right. Evelina and Kristen are who is between in my head. And like I said, I think even if you just go head to head and you weigh the majors like I do of two wins each, you weigh the silvers like I do, zero. Thank goodness there's none of them um, other than European silvers, but that's negative. Um, you have two majors, two, four, plus two, six, versus six wins to begin with, but one of them is a major. You're already at seven for Kristen, but that also doesn't include throw pink. So I think yeah. you have to drive throw pink. I think also, a tiebreaker. Also, Missy me. Gannon's fifth elite series, I believe, is also the tour championship, which you can weigh that how you want to weigh it. So... To me, with the throw pink factored in, with her playing a short and abbreviated season, her better average finishing place, she beats Evelina when it comes to cash. She beat Evelina in a lot of categories we're looking at here that I didn't even read. I think the player of the year has to go to Kristen Tatar. Yeah, I think so. I think if you if you you have to look at throw pink as the tiebreaker, and you cannot look at that tournament and tell me that the that like it, it should at least be considered. It has to matter because. The, a tournament matters when when the players care about it and like if you just watch that unfold like I, I don't think I think you're just kidding yourself if you're just gonna say well that just can't count it has to matter for something yeah so it's the most attended tournament of the entire year next up we have the worst take of the year mm. we got some great nominees here our first nominee comes back at, I believe it was debate night, prior to the World Championships. Yeah, yeah. When you had Robbie C. picking Isaac Robinson and Evelina Solonen to be his underperformers and going as far as to say that both of them are going to finish outside the top 15. Both went on to win the World Championships. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Quite, quite the pick. That's great. It's Next up, a good one. Uh, during the preview show, you have Trevor, Trevor Staub here. Right here. Picking Paul Ulibarri for his dark horse pick. Mm -hmm. Given multiple chances to recant it, Saying, I think he's injured. Is he even playing? I don't know. Sticking with Stuck it. My guns. Only for Yuli to play the first five holes lefty and then DNF. <laughs> he played the first four and a half. First four and a half holes lefty. I think he picked up on five. And then DNF. <laughs> so yeah, funny. that was a good one. Uh, the final one we have. Connors. I did really want to see his uh, his lefty full score out yeah, there. Yeah, I so. did want to as well. He was doing okay. Yeah, he, he was doing okay. He probably would have beat some players lefty. Mm -hmm. Final uh, take of the year we have is Connor's preseason pick for Alden Harris to win the Tour Championship. When in fact he did not even make the cut mm, this year. That's not a good that's take. That's a tough one. Those are our three 
nominees. And the winner for worst take of the year goes to Robbie C. He I really mean, deserves this one. Picking that's picking big. two players to that's be your legendary. underperformers <laughs> and they <laughs> both win. That is hilarious. Like that's, that's one of the worst takes of all time. <laughs> that's legendary. You have to try to make a take that bad. I don't <laughs> think you can make a worse take. I don't no. I like I actually don't think you can make a worse one. <laughs> no, that's incredible. What a take. What a moment. That feels like you watched the event happen. You went back in time in retrospect and purposely tried exactly. to make a bad take. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he did that. Maybe. Oh, maybe he, bar- he borrowed time. Trevor's time machine. He did. The next award we're going to give out is also for Tour Life. Yeah, we've okay. been giving Tour Life some credit this year. The yeah. best Tour Life We're big host. fans. Yeah. So, oh, dang. That's a huge one. Yeah. That's best Tour Life host. Tour I don't Life know how I'd pick. So the nominees, obviously, you don't watch Tour Life, are Brody Smith, Paul Ulibarri, and Silas Isaacson. This is Silas's first time being nominated for a Grippy as well. This is Silas's first nomination. The um, show could the not Academy go on Wars. without any of them. That's the thing, is we got to weigh all this out, right? Yeah. You have Silas producing. He also has a mic and camera on him. Yeah. He's also not in the room right now, so we aren't biased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, not. <laughs> next up, you have Brody Smith, who he plans the show. Blurry camera, though. And he mans the show. <laughs> he's he's typically word count three to one to everyone else. Blurry camera. Okay. Finally, you have Paul Ulibarri. Clear yeah. camera. Clear camera. Great setup. Not yep. a lot of words. Doesn't speak a lot, but when he does, he drives it home. Yeah. He drives mm-hmm. it home. And... He He's kind of responsible for mending the Brody Smith and the disc golf audience into the show. That's okay. That point. is a he heals a lot of big relationships. Feet. Yeah. yeah, big feet. So as you can tell, we 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 thought about this one a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of there was actually a little bit of a split when it came to voting. Hunter and I actually almost it almost came to blows. We almost fought each other. I've watched every single episode this year in preparation for this award. Yeah, and Hunter, that's why I'm very confident about our choice. I agree. So they're not gonna like this, but. The Tour Life Host of the Year Grippy Award goes to Missy Gannon. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, she's the best host. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think show, she said more than, than Yuli this year. She, yeah. Word counts definitely. She said more than Yuli and Silas. She's on what? Every other show? It That's, feels like. Yeah. I think it's technically been five or six so far this year. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Uh, it's been it's been a lot. Um, so, yeah. Best Tour Life Host. Missy Gannon. I think that was actually, we, we almost let it be an audience pick, but I think mm-hmm. it would've, she would have won by a landslide. Yeah, for sure. So, we didn't want to give it to the audience. We just kept it in-house. And yeah. Mi- mm-hmm. Congrats, Missy. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well earned. Well, well, well earned. The next award's another one of those <laughs> that the uh, the grippy just doesn't get sent to. This is not an award oh. you want to win. <laughs> Ooh. The biggest choke of the year. We have five nominees. Um, the first nominee I briefly mentioned earlier, which would be us for forgetting Anthony Barella's choke last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's um, a good nomination. That is still the craziest thing. I'm sure, and like every year, I'm sure we're we might have a, we might have a list here that is forgetting. Pro- I think we kind of protected ourselves this year. Hopefully. That's good. We'll find out. The second nominee we have is Ben Calloway at Jonesboro um, on the brink of his first Pro Tour win. I believe it would have been his first Pro Tour win. Yeah. Um, proceeding to not even really throw it close. He threw a Spike Kaiser. He chucked it away. On that, yeah. uh, on that island green and uh, went OB, and, you know, the rest was kind of history. He wasn't the only person that choked Jonesboro, but he was the one that stuck the most. Yep. Next, we have Ricky Wysocki during the final round of the Tour Championship. <sighs> went in with a six-stroke lead. Came out with a second-place uh, tiny trophy. <laughs> and um, a sick interview. And a, and a sick interview. A sick interview. A sick interview. He <laughs> felt sick during his interview. Yeah. Next, we have Cat Merch and Holland Hanley at Worlds. If both was, of them? Both of them. As one? As one. Um, okay. Well, because they, either of them should have won. Okay. Realistically, during that final round, they both had their moments, and in the end, it was Evelina Solomon that took home the title. And the final nominee is Luke Humphreys at Waco, also fighting for what I believe would be his first Pro Tour win. Um, all he had to do was par hole 18, and that forced Gannon Burr to make birdie to, to get to a playoff. He proceeded to throw OB, double bogey it to Gannon's birdie, and mm-hmm. lose by no, one. Green, yeah, man. that's a, that's it's not great. And the biggest choke of the year, Grippy, goes to Ricky Wysocki final round tour championship. I don't really want to clap. Uh, Let's reverse clap for him. Uh, yeah, as tough. It is tough. It was. He, you can't. You just. And he knows this. You just can't man. lose six strokes in one round. Yeah. Seven strokes in one I round. I mean, it You're took two. It to. definitely took two to tango there, but it was. He still lost it. Yeah, if he would just shot okay, it's a, it's a there yeah, wouldn't he, have been a tango yeah. to be had. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, our next award I'm very excited about. This okay. is a brand new award to the Grippy Show. 
Um, and we got some great nominees. All right. Some fantastic nominees, which is Spotter of the Year. The tournaments cannot happen we without spotters. care about the volunteers. Oh, the the sure. tournaments cannot happen without spotters, and some of them stick out in your memory a little bit more than others. This is one of those where the spotter is a thankless job. Yeah. <laughs> and the only so time they gonna... stick out in your memory is when something goes poorly. That's mm-hmm. right. So we're going to highlight those. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first nominee for spotter of the year. Well, not all of these went poorly. No. I'd say one of them went superbly. One of them went exactly <laughs> how they planned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the first spotter of the year nominee is the spotter who caught Madison Walker's disc mid-flight at the OTB Open. Out of the water. They yeah. popped up <laughs> they out of the popped water up out and of the water. sniped that thing. <laughs> Was it going in bounds? Probably not. We'll never know. But you'll never yep. know yeah, because yeah. it definitely didn't after he Ooh. grabbed it. Great he catch, though. hates her, for sure. For no, sure. it ended up he, that <laughs> they, were kind of, they were friends. Oh. Well, not, not necessarily friends. But uh, she was grateful that he saved her disc because he was basically like, if it went into the the reeds, he's lucky she's a nice person. Probably wasn't going to see it again. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone at home was watching, thinking, but what if it stuck through the reeds mm-hmm. and made reeds it to the green? Reeds are not a brick wall. Um, but it didn't because you know it was a brick wall. His hand on that disc, oh, hit him with it. Yeah, yeah. maybe the next, best snatch of the year. Could be, could have been, could have been catch of the year. Next spotter nominee we have was the Star Wars spotter, hole sixteen, dynamic disc open. Gotta love that. Um, that one I don't really think I need to explain Use that. The force. Just dressed up like a Jedi, had two lightsabers. Yeah. Love it. One green, one red. And the final spot of the year nominee is the spotter who tried to straddle the disc at Ledgestone, ended up having it jump up and hit him in the <laughs> chest, keeping it OB on a roller. That's a tough crazy one. move. Um, we did get that some insight. That has got to be the one that he's like. That's got to be the most like I feel embarrassed about this. He got one. an interview with yeah. Scott Stokely out of it. Oh, yeah, frick. Um, turns out he. He never wanted that to happen. Um, yeah, of course he did. We did also learn a little bit of insight. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> we did also learn a little bit of insight that Gannon Burr might have influenced him. Because yeah, apparently bad influence. a few holes earlier, a uh, roller had come into the other fairway, and Gannon lined up and straddled it and let it roll between his legs, and like everyone busted up laughing and thought it was funny that Gannon did that. Oh, and so then a few holes later, the spotter attempts to, pops up, hits him in the chest, stays open. I'm okay with blaming Gannon. Yeah, I so. think Gannon gets spotter of the year award. Spotter Influencer of the Year Award. <laughs> Spotter of the Year goes to the one that tried to straddle the disc at mm-hmm. Ledgestone. I mean, just what a moment. Oh, reverse clap. Oh, reverse clap. Good, yeah. good call. Well, but he did win a grippy. Because also, he was out there spotting all weekend long, and this was the only shot that this happened to. That is true. So he did do great he work the rest like of the weekend. He only went like one for 500 on and shots this bouncing would have, up and hitting Are you chest. trying to turn this? I, I can't tell if this is a positive no, award he, or a negative award. I can't tell. It's negative that it stuck out in her head. <laughs> Give him an award for well, But then Hunter is trying, he's but trying I am to turn trying it to a say, positive thing. I am he's trying doing to say. A bit. I, no, he genuinely. <laughs> oh, he's getting bit blamed. <laughs> yeah, you're bit blaming me. No, genuinely, props for being out there and spotting because these tournaments don't happen without that. <laughs> but downward props for trying to straddle the disc. I think he's learned his lesson next year. He won't What's do it. What's the negative version of him? props? You think that you see his name on the sh- sign-up sheet next year? If they're going to be like, ah. Well, it's the PDGA. He only got a five-month suspension, you, well, so he'll be right back. He, he did get a suspension. He did it. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not the type of thing you do no, twice. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't think that he'd get a. No, honestly, it, he's probably gonna be the best spotter next year because he's gonna be most observant of like I can't get hit with the disc. He's, he's gonna, gonna be so be, anxious. <laughs> exactly. He's <laughs> looking around the ground. Oh, yeah. I thought there was a roller. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably put him on a hole that he's not that they don't have rollers. Not on. that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, spotter of the year. Congrats. Next up, we have the best performance of the year. This is a tough award here. This one is actually, I think, the first award in Grippy history mm. that had to go to a vote. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. I, just, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we've ever had one. Legitimately, well, I we mean, normally foundation say... Foundation yearly awards, we just debated them on the show. We normally so. say... <laughs> we normally say uh, this one went to a vote, but like we all just were in agreement. and it was fun. This one legitimately went to a vote. Legitimate. Because we, we had mm-hmm. to go and you know. Yeah. So the nominees we have Isaac Robinson's world championship win. Um the PDGA I think technically called it wire to wire, but he did lose the win, lose it in the middle. I think it is a technical lead, wire to wire. He had the lead at the end yeah. of every single It is round. a technical wire to wire victory at the world championships. Um mm-hmm. next up we have the Gannon Burr Tour Championship performance, which included a course record and chasing Ricky down, being down six. And it was also the tournament that gave him two hundred thousand dollars plus in career earnings, not career, season earnings. Feels like career earnings. You got a lot of money. Than that. And then the final nominee is Andrew Presnell at the Champions Cup. A lot mm. of people have forgotten don't, what he did out there. Don't you dare forget. Don't it. you forget. Mm-hmm. Never forget. Um, if there was a dare. moment of the year award, it would probably be the moment he threw that putter ob 
and like freaked out because I was his only putter, and his caddy had to run a like seven minute mile back to back to the car. <laughs> that was that was electric. Um, caddy of the year. Now I think that for the show we will give the arguments that led to the vote. Okay. If that makes sense, so okay. that everyone knows who voted what. Yeah, when. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for so sure. um, I'll let Trevor go first. Okay, I voted for Isaac Robinson. Um, I think that at Worlds, at a course, it's like the the it's a high strength of field. It's courses that nobody really knew and had played and had to come practice. And it is the like going wire to wire and having the lead after every round for five straight rounds, beating the best of the best. Um, and looking completely calm and collected, even when he lost the lead for a little bit, got it right back, and then just coasted the tournament home. Um, that for me was my tournament of the year for that reason. Um, I guess I'll say mention the reason I think I think it beats out Gannon Burr's performance because though it was an extraordinary performance, it was not a major championship. There was a smaller field. I think that his was a. I think. Isaac's was a performance that happened over a larger span of time. It was a bigger performance, I guess. I don't know. That's that's my that's why I voted for it. But. I personally voted for the Gannon Burr Tour Championship. Um, my logic here is one: we saw Isaac do this last year, so it's kind of I'm. It wasn't really like it didn't feel that shocking to me to see him go wire to wire because we've seen it, um, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a worse performance than before, but it does take the, the kind of glory away from me a little bit. But most importantly, Gannon Burr, him and Ricky Wysocki put on an absolute show similar to what we've seen when I think it was Paul and Eagle McMahon at European Open previously, um, where even in that one round, Ricky was on the course record pace previously was 10. Ricky shot 12 and Gannon still gained a stroke on him by shooting 13 and breaking the course record. Then the next round, he came out a little more flat, let Ricky open up a six stroke lead. It felt over. And it was kind of like, dang, what's Gannon going to do? Because he had the win to cross 200,000 in career, in the season earnings, which was a lot of pressure on him going into that final round. Being back six strokes, he would have to tie the largest comeback in DGPT history in order to do that and make history in that way. And that's exactly what he did. And he came out, put on an incredible performance. Obviously, Ricky slipped up at the beginning, but towards the end, they were going blow for blow. And there was just clutch shot after clutch shot after clutch shot with tons of pressure on Gannon. And he executed time and time and time again, all the way down to hole 18 when he put his drive into a phenomenal spot, got up and down, made the putt, and uh, took down the tour championship. It was a performance that uh, was for the history books. So that's why I voted that way, leaving the split to be decided by Sir Connor Kennedy. Mm-hmm. What do you want me to do here? Do you want me to just announce what it is? Well, you can explain your logic. And then, I would, yeah. I, it, it was a very tough choice for me because obviously both are insane uh, performances. What I ended up going with, the way that I had to choose between the two, because I had to, was I went with what was a more exciting and flashy performance because to me that just seemed more award worthy, I guess. And I felt like, go ahead, Hunt, give hit, hit him with it. Ah. And the winner for best performance, Grippy, goes to Gannon Burr Tour Championship. I would like to mention it is interesting. Somebody, somebody close to the show described right after the round described it as Gannon got a little bit of luck down the stretch, and Ricky just didn't play as good as he had all weekend. That was Hunter that said that after the tour. Well, that was because Brody Smith had just so said. Know, what was the text before that I was responding to? Please. Was Ricky getting unlucky or just played bad? Gannon had a little bit of luck down the stretch. Ricky also just didn't play as good as he had all weekend. Yeah. Well, he, I don't he know that specifically point. asked what, Ricky. Was Ricky I was, unlucky? I was saying, you, that was that? your thoughts after the tournament. That was, that's all I was saying. answering a question about Ricky's performance, though. Yeah, and, it, and Ricky just didn't play. So that's what I'm saying. Like I think I think that the comeback is a little bit more of a okay. come down. Well, I think at Worlds, Gannon Burr didn't play as good as he had all year. Okay, that's fair. I, look, I'm just, you I was just making sure statement? all the facts did, were did, out did, there. Did, did Isaac beat Gannon Burr his absolute best at Worlds? Huh? No, but it's not a Gannon okay. Burr well, versus then, Isaac Robinson uh, Well, this award. isn't a Gannon Burr versus Ricky Wysocki award. He was the one relevant in that scenario. You would you would ask yourself, was Antela playing his best as he okay. had all year? He? I would say he was very close to it, yeah. I'd say Ricky was very close to his best at the tour championship as well. Okay. Would you disagree with that? Yes. You don't think Ricky's in the, final round in the, tour, of the tour championship? No, this is the whole tournament award. Right, but I, would you agree that most of that award has to do with the comeback? Because you did emphasize I don't know, that man. quite a bit. I don't okay. know. Here, here's the tough part is it went to a vote and you lost. Gannon Burr took I, it down. No, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just giving my case for my vote. That doesn't change anything. It doesn't change my opinion. Let the comments decide below. Well, it's already decided. Let, Gannon no, Burr has let the, the comment, let the comments chime in below. They may, and they will side with you because it's you. <laughs> so 
that's fine. But I, the award you, you can ask yourself: Is it me or is it the things I'm saying? I it's you. I won't have to ask myself. We've seen it play out many times, Trevor. Unless he tries to dress up. This is a tough part. You're forgetting that Connor sided against me, though. Connor sided against me. But it doesn't. Connor sided with me, which is an instant loss. You can't side with Hunter. I think that's a pretty. That's a defense that, while I agree, yes, sometimes happens. I think that's a little unfair to me to say that any time that the comments side with me, it's because it's me. If you go, if you're going against me. Right, it that's, is. that's what happens on the show, though. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's not just that, always. So, like, you can then, always just say, like, well, Trevor, I mean, there will yeah, be, of course There will be some that me. side with your logic, but then there will be a lot that side with you because you're going against me. I agree with that. Like I said, I think that's just a, that's a little bit of a defense that's that puts me in a bit of a box. Well, I I didn't decide this award. You're right. No, I Connor voted, did. You voted. I definitely Connor, Connor was the deciding vote. I definitely do blame Connor the most. Connor was the deciding vote. For sure. You're allowed to change your vote, too. No, did, please, did don't. Hear, <laughs> please don't. Please well, do no. that. You just introduced new evidence. Did hearing that text make you change the vote? I don't think so. I <laughs> would like to move on. Okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I will not be upset if you change your vote. My vote's locked in. I, I, you don't need to change your vote, Connor. I'm not going to change my vote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't need to change your vote. I was serious. I was being... I, l- t- at the end of the day... I want I, this award to I, go to the just best be clear, It is very, Period. it's very, di- this is a very difficult choice. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's cut and dry. I'm, it's I'm also going to be clear on that. I don't I, think it's this a bad, isn't, this isn't Hunter's best performance award. No, this I is did, the best performance. I think it's Gannon. He thinks it's I Isaac. Just, there it, is no wrong answer here. No, I know. I'm, I'm not going to change my vote. Okay. Just to be clear. I just, I think that what Gannon did was exciting and I, that takes into performance for me. Okay. Most exciting, there you go. most exciting performance of the year. Uncalled for. <laughs> Next up, we have the best friend of the show award. This award goes to the best friend of the show <laughs> for the year. We have a lot of friends of the show. Three that we're going to nominate here for it different goes, reasons. But I feel like a lot of times we nominate people that they're not only that we, they are listeners of the show, but also bring up things about the show or contribute to the show. Yeah, in, in a w- way. different ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, first off, trying to defend his title. We have Simon Lazat. Mm-hmm. Um, came even a bigger friend of the show when we got to play around with him this year. He would have won best friend of the YouTube channel for sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, but he could also win best friend of the show. Won it last year. Next up, we have Gannon Burr. This is a tough one because um, don't know if he's a friend or an enemy of the mm-hmm. show, mainly because he clips everything we say that's incorrect. Yeah. Avid listener. But he's a very avid listener of the show. Yeah, I would say true. I would say you are a friend if you are holding us accountable. Yeah. Well, true. that's why that he's is nominated. He that did kind of yell at us for, for saying Calvin Heiberg was like a year younger than he was. Yeah. That was a tough and one. And the final <laughs> nominee is Kale LaVisca, who is so much of a friend of the show that he actually gave us some insider information on certain things that happened earlier in the season that I don't know if we've ever named him as the source. So oh, yeah, we definitely know we did. Okay, we yeah. did. The prodigy situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was yeah. so much of a friend of the show that he was willing to go and explain what was confusing about a lot of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love Kale. And the final, the food and finally, the, person. <laughs> the best friend of the show award goes to Gannon Burr. Uh, a, I agree. Accountability is part of friendship. You know, we, we were supposed to have <laughs> Burr's Burns uh, be a segment of this. Uh-huh. And he still is rocking the grip lock patch. Yeah, that is, that is true. That's that even is that's the nail in the coffin. Yeah, we really. were at USDGC and he's yeah. got the grip lock patch right out there on the side. That's big. So that is that is huge. I think we should. I feel like we should make it known that we can if, be bought. If you were any, <laughs> if you're any professional disc golfer on tour and you ever would feel the the desire to either wear a piece of foundation gear or put our patch on your back, we'll give it to you. Yes. <laughs> like, like that's that's pretty much a guarantee. So just just slide into the DMs. What I would like is know? to get to the point where the sh- we have so many great friends of the show that we can do the phone call roulette, where it's whoever picks up in the yeah. shortest amount of time. Just we're getting that. close. That you just true. call them and whoever picks up. Well, I think the funniest one would be to, to do it would be Evan of the year, and it's Evan Scott, Evan Smith, and Aiden Scott. Yeah. That we just need to get all three of their contacts. Yeah. <laughs> that would that's be funny. funny. All right. Our next award is also a brand new award. The Grippy Show, okay, which is one. the Grippy Grammy Award. We're giving yeah. away the Grammy Award. Yeah. Quite, <laughs> they've quite given a, us the uh, authority to well, do the, the show. Grippy Grammy. Yeah, award. Yeah, Grammy isn't like a grandma, and it's spelled oh. different. <laughs> it's Grammy. It's G R A M M I E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grammy. of course. Yeah. Grammy, like you're going to Grammy's house. Of course, <laughs> uh, award. And we were. It just happens in musical. Um, <laughs> We oh, well, Grammy loves music. You always sing to grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually let my grandma decide this award. Grammy loves music. Um, we were blessed to have quite a musical year. Yeah. A lot of musical talent on tour. Um, mm-hmm. The first nominee here comes from DJ KJ. Okay. He dropped his second song, but one song of this year, which yep. was uh, Kevin Jones' final round back nine. 
He dropped that this year. It's good, true. Um, what was it. his other song? Front, front round, round one, front nine, round one, front nine. Okay, this is the final round, back nine. Okay, so it kind of very confusing for somebody who is not in disc well, golf. There's a lot, golf. lot to happen in the middle there, so yep. we'll find that out. True. Um, <laughs> That's a good point, hon. Next up, we had the Wind Dragon by yeah. Eagle McMahon mm-hmm. to oh. celebrate the release. One of, of the just most electric things ever. To have yeah, Wind Dragon. It's going in your head. Yeah, 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 yeah. for yeah. sure. The I hear that whatever. I hear that Pokemon is actually thinking about changing their theme songs. They might. Yeah. And then the final nominee was Silas Schultz's diss track of Drew Gibson. Yeah, that was. Um, crazy. It has since been deleted. Was, I feel like you that, can't yeah, find it. I but feel like that just kind of flew under the radar a little bit of how you can crazy still find it on Reddit. It is, Reddit. A, it it is, is still on Reddit if deleted. you didn't if you didn't get a chance to listen to it. Crazy. Um, it is still on Reddit. And the Grippy Grammy Award. Well, I think goes, you say honorable mention is the alleged. Drew Gibson response. Yeah, there was one employee that saw it and texted us. Yeah, I don't think it would have got nominated based on what was said to us about it. That, yeah, no, yeah. And um, <laughs> we immediately went to it's find. I mention. mean, to put it on the same kind of table as as final round back nine. Okay, though, I'm sorry. Dishonorable mention. Thank um, you. Yeah, it got, te- but we did. By the time we got to Instagram, it was gone. So yeah, it was apparently sad. posted and deleted in record time. I think there might be one person on earth that got to see it and they happened to work at this company. So we know it existed, <laughs> but we didn't get to see it. And it's very it's sad. Um, but winning the first ever Grippy Grammy Award is Silas Schultz for his Drew Gibson diss track. Yeah. The creativity yeah. and the writing, oh, the yeah. deliverance. Really? The flow? The flow, yeah, all yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Very good. And honestly, the good guy nature to take it down when the heat got too hot for the other good person. Good guy. Oh, okay. You know, that's that plays into it. Because right. he could have just said, screw you, man. This is blowing up. I'm getting big off of this because he was. And he could have left it up. But he didn't. Because he said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take it down. If it's hurting. Yeah. If it, it the fire was too hot. It wasn't technically hurting Drew. It was someone close to Drew, allegedly. And so he took it down. But it's on Reddit. You can find it there if you want to watch it. <laughs> Next up, we have, and this one's still being counted. This is a public vote. No, I think I've got it. Um, we have the Heiser Club member of the year. Yeah, there we go. That's a big um, one. Every, people so, come from all around the world to listen to If this. you don't know, if you go to patreon.com slash foundation disc golf, you can join the Heiser Club. And we have a weekly podcast there called the Heiser Club Mailbag. Um, we also had the Heiser Club Championship that just happened. We have contests. There's a lot of ways that we engage with Heiser Club members throughout the year. A good bit of extra content. Um, a ton of extra content. Exclusive videos each month. You mm-hmm. can find uh, Con's Course Quest. There's a few episodes of that out sure. there where Connor attempts our Course Conquest. All kinds of fun stuff. All available over at patreon.com. But... Um, we decided this year to let them nominate each other and then vote on said nominations for one Heiser Club member to rule them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what they don't know or didn't know until this moment is this Heiser Club member of the year is going to receive a free annual membership to Patreon next year. Wow. It's true. They didn't know they were voting on that. Might have changed how they voted. Yeah. So I didn't want to <laughs> let them know. So the Heiser Club member of the year, Trevor, why don't you walk us through some of the top nominations I will. and then give us the award. Um, so I'll just list off a few names that were really thrown out there a bunch. Um, the Bond Traegers. Yeah. Um, both of them. Both of them. Okay. They're, they're brothers. I believe it's Grant and Kent. Correct yes. me if I'm wrong on that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, uh, we're nominated a bunch. We also got um, Derek Rashke. Yeah, that's a good one. Got a nominee as well. Big, uh, Shay, big rash, as I like to call him. Shay Stevens, mm-hmm. longtime member, Glitter Connor's bomb. best friend. Glitter uh, Caleb Jones was nominated. Brain teasers, everybody loves those. Amazing. Uh, Gary teasers. Daddario, yeah, love that. He's uh, on debate night. Mm-hmm. He's asking questions. He's also starring on the reality series right now. He makes guitar strings um, and picks. A few. Dip, what? what? It's, a, it's a guitar string and pick company as well. Daddario. Daddario. Oh, that's no. <laughs> um, but without further ado, one one got. Just enough votes to win this year. I'm anxious right now. The I'm Heiser Club. Oh my gosh! Member of the year. Yeah, is Shea Stevens. Okay. Team Shea. I've so got the shirt. Apparently, apparently it to because I can't give it. Apparently, to you sent us a glitter bomb in the mail, and that's what went. Yeah, just to let everybody that's not part of the mailbag no, or the Heiser Club know, he did send us a glitter bomb. Yeah, he glitter bombed. Luckily, well, I don't it know. It went if off. Luckily, it went off in our mailbox yeah. at our old place. So I feel bad for whoever's. They're building out that old. Every place right bit now. of mail we got every single day had, had glitter glittered. all over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shea Stevens. It's fun. That was fun. Careful opening your grippy, Shay. Yeah, hey, son. Keep, keep your it's eyes peeled. Joke. It's a little joke, Shay. Joke. You'll be fine. That. Yeah, we'll be fine. Glitter bomb. No. <laughs> <laughs> that can't even be right. Like, we wouldn't do that. No, you'd be a psychopath to have sent someone that. 
There you go. Can't believe it. the the Heiser Club turned against us there. Because Shea also declared mortal enemies with multiple of us throughout the season. That is true. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of all over the place. Exactly. And he ended up as well. Connor ended up being team captain, team Shea. By the end yes, of it all, that is true. I do have a team, team Shea, team but, captain disc. Anyways, you're missing out on all that fun stuff and more if you're not a part of the mailbag. So we do have one more award here, the final award. If I were to give this award a keyword, it would be prestige. Okay. If I were, if I, if I may do so. I yeah, don't mind it. Feels, yeah, I don't um, mind it. Right keyword. Keyword prestige there, um, because it's it's the one that's the most coveted. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. they take the mm-hmm. most time on this one. And, and the, the committee is really harsh. It's very they harsh. really scrutinize. Oh, yeah. They're really rude too. And they are so <laughs> they're rude. mean. They're always we like have, stupid. They're like, go get me coffee. Yeah, why don't you fix your two broken toilets? We have our, our <laughs> nominee Firefest of the Year might we should have nominated the toilet situation. That's honestly uh, both our toilets we came in this today. They're broken. <laughs> both our toilets are broken. Yeah. They're like clogged, but there's nothing in it's them. It's not really a clog, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just they're broken. That, both of them. What the been, heck happened this week? Some would call it a festival of fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like, it might need a fire fest on Clog them. More like a poop fest. <laughs> poop and right, boys. Yeah. Yeah, the award we're talking about here, podcast of the year. Whoa. Our nominees this year. There are so many podcasts. The Joe Rogan the experience. Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> Our nominees this year. Uh, first off, we have Bards of the Board. It's a good a one. A Robbie C. and Jason uh, game podcast. Yeah. Check out foundationboardgames.com. We don't have that. <laughs> that doesn't exist. The, the next one. Is this one a surprise that it, it got a nominee? It beat out a lot of great podcasts. I actually wish I was into like, I, I we wow okay. I really wish I was into <laughs> board games like in that scene, so I could listen to that, and enjoy it. I, I agree. totally do. I completely yeah. agree yeah. with you. They, I think they rate it based on like uh, cookies. Like what? if this if guy knows a, the lore. If like ones, uh, I think the like best a game can be is like a chocolate chip cookie. That's amazing. I'm pretty, I I'm love pretty that. Sure. We're just looking around like I, th- I didn't knows. know Styles edited. He started taking his headphones off like he had context. He was going to the bathroom. <laughs> hey, don't <laughs> yeah. flush that guy. They don't work. He's not gonna um, try, bro. The next nominee, the Heiser Club mailbag received the nomination. Wow. The most intimate podcast wow. yeah. by wow. far. That's how good it is. It's so good. I love that podcast. And the final nominee, the two time and current reigning podcast of the year. <sighs> Grip locked. Yeah, I mean, they've got their reasons. A three peat would be crazy. Gannon did just win three and one. It'd be show. very unlikely. It'd be very, very unlikely, Hunter. It's just like, yeah, you start thinking like, surely the committee won't let that happen. It'd be very, though. very unlikely. Like they're well, gonna find some. And way. we might would have to go back and in retrospect result. change yeah. awards that have happened because well, like clutch moment might go to go yeah, to that. I'm sorry, like, I've got I got bad news. What? Oh, For no. all the other podcasts, Grip oh, Lock Magazine! Come on! Three time! Get three wrecked! Three time! Three time! Three time! Three time! I yeah, figured baby. if I joined in saying it, it'd be too loud. So yeah. I just fist pumped. Okay, yeah. yeah. We gotta Grip change lock. the t-shirt now. We gotta change it. We gotta Now it's gotta say three, only three time uh, Grippy Award winning podcast. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, we gotta be careful because... Well, no, we can just say three time podcast of the year now. Well, well, no, but the Tour Life hasn't won... Tour Life's only ever won two Grippies. We do have to be careful. Yeah, they've only won two. No, because they, they're always going to be behind us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What well, do you mean always? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the committee, well, if, if the committee I mean, stays like, the, the same. The pattern has shown. <laughs> <laughs> now we will. We do have a preliminary possible moment of the year ahead of us because we do have a solid selects. True. Ooh. And imagine yeah. if someone got this. Yeah. It'd be crazy. Yeah. Nobody's ever gotten this. No, Trevor got it once. Thanks, man. I do think Trevor <laughs> has the highest chance of getting it a second time before either of us get it. That seems like a fallacy. Well, if you, just, if you, just think, back, if you just think back logically, you're the only one that's ever got it. That's a red herring. I, I have the highest percentage. <laughs> I'm you have the highest debating percentage. like professional debaters. Um, okay. But it's bad for both of you. Well, because that's a straw man. But ignoring your straw this man. This <laughs> right here in this bag is a ginger. What? Uh, <laughs> I think I'd smell it. <laughs> I think I would also smell it. Uh, that I actually really like that guess. Silas is drinking a red sports drink right now. <laughs> the color red reminds me of a red disc. I'm thinking of a red disc. I think I'm thinking of a Innova. I'm. What do you think, Connor? <laughs> um, what do you think, Connor? Man, why does it take us so long to make I don't these know. stupid I guesses? I think like, that it could T-Bird be. T-Bird 3. There, I said it. T Bird three. T Bird three. Dang Holy on. money! I don't even know if there's one T Bird three out there. Uh, there has been in the past. Never. What do you think Star T Bird three. I sold never, one to a guy. Actually never made a T Bird three. Um, I'm opening it. 
I am going to go with a. Fin. I'm getting finish line. Okay. okay. I like that. And it is a. What's the what's that one? What <laughs> what's is the, what's like the main the, the fairway era? driver the era? Thank you. That's think, what I'm thinking I don't know of. If there's any up there? Oh frig! It's just main essence. essence. Ooh. This guy is a good picker. He's so good. He's good he picks is that the an best EXO? One. It's an EXO soft essence. Why does that exist? How did Silas even man- gram. How did Silas it's even actually, manage this that? Is electric. How did Silas even how manage is that? Soft? I mean, how did how well, did in Silas the steel plastics? This is pretty soft. <laughs> how did Silas even manage that? He's crazy. Dude. Well, I ladies and gentlemen, I think he's bringing in discs. Next week starts <laughs> the off season for Grip Locked, meaning next week starts the in the bag. We should you should probably comment down below ideas for us. If you, you probably want. should. <laughs> yeah, if you have any in the bag prompts, comment down below, um, and we'll see you next a week. A lot on the, the line this year. Off season of Grip Lock. First off season episode. Also tomorrow is the first off season podcast episode. If you want to listen to that, it actually comes out on Wednesdays. We record tomorrow. So take that. So take that to the bank. And we'll see you next week for the off season. Talk to them.